Hey, what's up guys? Economy is cracking down while Bitcoin continues to consolidate. In this video, we'll take a look at the Bitcoin market, our current economy, what is likely to happen next, then billionaire Ray Dalio will explain why you need Bitcoin in your portfolio. Guys, inflation skyrocketed recently. Current banking system will not help, as sub high yield saving accounts offer no more than 0.5% APY. This is why I partnered with BlockFi. BlockFi is a crypto platform that lets you leverage your crypto and put it to fair use. Here, you can earn high yield, trade different crypto assets, borrow cash and more. This is like all-in-one crypto bank. This platform has highly secure BlockFi wallet where you can store your crypto with no minimum balance. Now, you do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. At BlockFi, you can borrow money at rates as low as 4.5% APR and use your crypto as a collateral. BlockFi is the first company to launch Bitcoin Reward Credit Card, a Visa credit card where you can earn up to 3.5% on every purchase with no annual fees. Sign up today and earn up to $250 bonus when you open an account with the link blockfi.com slash aimstone in the description box below. Disclaimer, the interest accounts are intended only for non-US persons. Let's take a look at the Bitcoin market. Bitcoin market is bleeding. As of the time this recording BTC is around $29,000. It dropped by quite a bit to low $28,000 this morning, and now it went back up to the previous level. It seems like it broke down just briefly the 2 week support of $28,600, bucks. but it's back up now, at least as of the time this recording. It looks like BTC can go lower from here. Why don't you just drop to $20,000 already so I can finally buy in big? I guess we'll have to wait till that happens, or should I say, if that happens. Bitcoin fear greed index is at 12 today, I would expect to be lower, as fear continues to go around the market. Ethereum is bleeding even more, it's slightly over $1,800 per coin, and this morning it touched low $1,700, it was very close to reach that almost 1 year low. Last time ETH has been at $1,700 before May 12 was in July 2021. So there is still a good sale going on in Bitcoin and Ethereum market. I think if BTC will drop to $20,000, Ethereum will likely to drop to $1,000. Oh man, that would be a buy of a decade, maybe even a century. It's funny how Federal Reserve more than doubled its balance sheet, printed more than $5 trillion in the past 2 years, created all this inflation, and all assets, stock market and crypto, and so on, is about to go to pre-pandemic level. So what was the point of all this printing? At this moment it seems like it does more harm than good. Inflation part is tricky, there are two camps, gold bucks say the price inflation is created because of the Federal Reserve prints money constantly. And there is the other camp that says the inflation is created because of the logistics supply chain issues. They would also say that look at what happened in the past decade. Federal Reserve started QE since the housing bubble in 2008, and until 2022 there was almost no inflation, CPI was under 2% on average. The same in Japan, Japan is in theories of monetary stimulants, while the inflation rate there was very low for decades. However, in 1950s, average McDonald's hamburger was at 15 cents, and now the same hamburger is at $2.50. In 1950s, can of coke was at around 5 cents, and now it close to a dollar. Do these long-term prices also increase due to the logistics supply issues? I highly doubt it. On my humble opinion, printing money and supply issues both contribute greatly to the price inflation. Long-term inflation is mostly affected by printing money, while short-term inflation is affected by supply issues. Let me know what you guys think about inflation, comment below. US economy shrank 1.5% last quarter in the worst showing since COVID recession, new GDP estimate shows. The US economy shrank at annual rate of 1.5% in the first quarter of 2022, the first decline since the second quarter of 2020. The Bureau of Economic Analysis estimated Wednesday in a worse than expected update to the last month figure, which showed a decline 1.4%. In the first quarter 2020 GDP contracted by 5.1%, and in the second quarter it contracted by 31%. Now, the first time since Q2 of 2020 GDP contracted once again by 1.5%. It doesn't seem like that bad. 
However, all eyes are currently will be in Q2 later this year. If we will have another negative quarter, it would mean that we would be officially in the recession. So it seems like central bank would most likely will have to stimulate the economy with monetary policies in this recession. They have two monetary tools. First one is printing money, and the second one is interest rates. There is not much they can do with interest rates as it's near 0%. The only thing they can do is to print more money, with the hope that the short-term price inflation would resolve itself out with fixing logistics supply issues. That would be beneficial for stock market and of course, Bitcoin. JP Morgan says Bitcoin has significant upside from here and could rise to $38,000, real estate not so much. That would be the price level before the 50 basis points interest rate hike. The investment banking strategy led by Nicholas said on Wednesday note that they believe Bitcoin, the world's leading digital asset, has significant upside potential after its recent fall. The strategist mentioned the $38,000 price target for Bitcoin, which represents a potentially 29% jump from cryptocurrency's Wednesday morning trading level of $29,400. It's not like we need validation from the banking sector. Also, I am not sure how they came up with that number. I would like to see BTC in low 20s before $38,000. I'm sitting in a bunch of cash and want to buy Bitcoin at lower prices. Here is a great on-chain analytics chart. It represents supply last active one plus year ago rate of change. Historically, it has been a very useful chart as it indicates where Bitcoin is overbought or oversold. When BTC hit this green area, it means it's oversold. And when it reaches the red area, it means it's overbought. And right now, we are in this green area and the rate of change is inverting. I think it's very bullish indicator for Bitcoin. The rate of change right now is even lower when it was back during 2018 the bottom of the bear market. Back then BTC dropped to $3,200. In 2015 the rate of change was a bit lower than it is right now, but the current rate of change is even lower where it was back in 2012. I think this is a huge screaming buy signal. But I will be cautious, continue to DCA with the hope of the lower pullback. Now, let's take a look at this video where Ray Dalio explains what is going to happen to our economy, to Bitcoin, and what should we do to protect our portfolio. Let's take a look. So we, we keep asking the same question of everybody. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen to this crazy economy of ours? Well, what do you well, see happening here? I think like, you know, three major themes that we have to understand, right? Um, the creation of too much debt and too much money, right? Mm -hmm. that, and the amounts that never existed in our lifetime, but existed in many times in the past, in the 1930 to 45 period, number one. So we'll talk about that, I hope. Number two is the internal conflict, populism of the left and the right, and what that is doing both politically and that, of course, have economic uh, considerations. And number three is the rising of great powers to challenge the existing great power and the existing world order. Now, if you bring those things down, here we are having a monetary policy. Okay, where are we in the monetary policy? And what's the big question? So if you want me to answer that, I'll, I'll give yeah, you... So I think, right, I think that big question is, can the Fed effectively uh, reduce demand without breaking the back of the economy? Okay. And rather than just jumping to the answer, I always like to deal with the mechanics of behind right. the answer, you know? And um, I think the answer is no, but here's the reason why. An interest rate, uh, when there's a lot of debt, one man's debts are another man's financial assets. Mm -hmm. And they have to balance both of those things. And so they will not be able to raise interest rates to a high enough le level to adequately provide a re real return to investors. So if you think about the rise in rates, mm -hmm. and we say 3% is an interest rate, right. or even 4% an interest rate, that is not going to be an amount of money that's adequate to compensate for the inflation rate. And we're in a paradigm shift, I think. A paradigm is, uh, you know, it, something happens for 10 years, an environment for 10 years, and at the end of that 10 years, People believe everything that happened in the prior 10 years, and then they get a surprise. Right. And then they start to change. And something like, for example, do I leave, cash is a safe investment, or bonds are a safe investment after a 40-year bull market and those types of things. That begins to shift as they start to think, am I getting a real return? 
So there's going to be a supply-demand balance. Most importantly, the Federal Reserve is going to sell, individuals are selling, foreigners are selling, and the U.S. government is selling because it has to fund its deficit. So there's going to be a supply-demand problem. That means that it produces a squeeze because so much money was put out at such cheap rates right. and so much financing was taken that they, it'll be difficult to achieve that balance. You and I have talked about a lot over the years is cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And in the past year or two, it felt to me that you had shifted your view about them a little bit and actually got excited to think that maybe Bitcoin and others could get interesting. And I'm curious how you think about that now. I think a digital gold, which would be a Bitcoin type of thing, is a um, is something that probably in the interest of diversification of finding uh, an alternative to gold has a little part, a little spot relative to gold and then relative to other assets. But I think that we're in an environment that we're now going to ask, what is the new money? And so when I say cash is trash, what I mean is that all currencies will be currencies that will go down in relationships to goods and services. And we are in an environment where we're going to be looking at what are those assets? What is the type of money that you could move between countries that's a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth? Bitcoin has made a tremendous achievement over the last 11 years of being at it. It's a tiny percentage of my... Well, I think essentially Ray Dalio is saying that the economy is going to shit, and cash is trash, stock market is even more trashier, and he recommends to own real assets, does not really specify which ones, but I think he's talking about gold and silver. He also believes that Bitcoin remains digital gold and it's a part of his portfolio. Let me know what you guys think about our current economy and Bitcoin. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.